Good day and God bless. Welcome to our time of devotion and prayer. Let us pray. Lord, may your spirit open your word unto us that we may be in all of who we are ready to receive truth, understanding, and be guided in wisdom that we may be a light unto others. And Lord, we give you thanks and praise for those who light the way for us, whose ministry and teaching are a regular blessing to us. Lord, we pray for those who seek for a teacher, who seek for fellowship, who are looking for a church home, for congregation, for someone to understand their point of view. Lord, forgive us when we, we don't appreciate another person's point of view. We get caught up in the way we think we're right and certain. But Lord, next to you, what certainty do we have? Only that we are loved. And in that love, we are forgiven. And we are all of us sinners. And so help us to find our home and our fellowship together. To understand these differences we have, our ways of working together, and ways of learning and growing. That in all we say and do, we will glorify you in all the relationships we have. We will show the mercy and grace that's first been shown us in Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Turning to the Gospel of John, reading in John chapter 16 at verse 22, Jesus says, and now ye therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man shall taketh from you. He's saying this to prepare them for the reality of the cross, the reality of his ascension, the reality of our resurrection. So often we think that the way things are, the way things have been, that's always going to be the way that when we look to our our life in Christ that faith is a, is a fixed point it is a set of goals achievable mandates that's not faith that's sort of the the grocery list of of learning and yes, we are called to learn. We're called to teach one another and be supportive in each other's journey of faith as a learning process. But it's more than that. It's a living process. And often our journey with Christ takes us through those times where we feel quite far away from Christ. And if your journey in Christ has always been about being reaffirmed and told that everything's good and living life in, in, in ease and... Folks, there's more to life than having a good day. And some of the best lessons we learn, some of the best life we live is in the context of days of sorrow and suffering. What Jesus is telling his disciples is you are going to suffer sorrow, whether it's the sorrow before the cross or the sorrow after in the persecution and, and, and the, the ridicule that they're going to face from their own people, perhaps their own families. But that he will be with them. In the end, the promise of Christ is not that we will always experience him the way we want to, but he will always be there waiting for us at whatever end. Not that we will be praised, not that we will be uplifted in all we do, but that in Christ we will be uplifted to glory and strength, to honor God and to experience the fullness of love forever. Some days we have, we have those moments in life where oh, it's happening now. When we're working in ministry or mission or we're helping and befriending a neighbor or a stranger and we have those wow moments where the presence of Christ is so great and tremendous. Remember those in the hard times. You're going to come back to those good times. And it's just a glimpse of how great and wondrous heaven can be. God bless and keep you. Amen.